Hi everybody, how's it going? My name is Tyson Denez. I run the Farming Simulator modding page, Denez Farms Farming Simulator Modding. And today we're going to be doing the uh, Automoaks tutorial. You guys uh, v voted overwhelmingly to have one long tutorial with timestamps, so you can just click on each piece that you want. So that's what we're going to do. Uh, before we get started here, I'd like to give a few. Uh, I'd like to go over a little bit of history of the map. So the map was originally created in Farming Simulator 17 by a guy named CWJ108. Uh, he uh, he came. He was he was making maps when uh, FS19 came out, but he stopped. Uh, I don't know why he stopped, but I do know that he was working on the Dyersville map that you mo most of you guys know about, and he worked on a few other maps. The guy was an absolute mapping legend when it came to making small scale to medium scale American farms. Uh, Autumn Oaks is based off of an area by Casco, Wisconsin, and the uh, half of it is actually a state forest, so he filled it in with a farm display. I don't quite, I don't remember the farm display name at the moment here, but I will put a link to it in the description. Uh, it did win an award at the national, uh, one of the national toy shows. Shortly after FS19 came out, uh, MB Farms did a conversion of this map. But not only did he convert it, he also expanded the uh, top and bottom of the map, which were uh, had nothing on them in the original map. Uh, he also added a new cell point. He actually, had, he actually had two. I've disabled one. His original uh, release of the map also ha added uh, cows to the main farm, and that was it. Uh, and a silage bunker. There was uh, nothing else really functional on the map. So after that, uh, the map kind of just died out in favor of uh, more, I don't want, I guess the word, I guess the technical word would be complete maps, like maps that would had more features and whatnot, because it was an early conversion, and he did a good job. Autumn Oaks was the map that got me inspired into modding. Uh, it, seeing the terrain and everything just made me want to make that 7070 series, which is what kind of... It was a huge drive, and same with the manure spreaders and everything else. It just the very beginning days were inspired by Autumn Oaks. So you fast forward to uh, late 2020, and a uh, guy named Brian Greenewalt, who I believe is a firefighter, but he might be a paramedic. I'm not 100% sure. I know he were, he's a first responder, and as part of his job, he uh, lives at uh, the station or building, whatever, uh, where he's on call for 24 hours at a time. So in that time, he's free to do whatever he wants, and he took up learning uh, Blender. So he uh, decided that as one of his projects, he was going to redo all the barns on Autumn Oaks. He put an interior in all of the uh, in all of the barns except for the one uh, that MB Farms added. Uh, he did uh, two tie stall barns. Uh, he and uh, the uh, just like a little beef farm at the what used to be the sheep farm in the FS17 version. At the around the same time, he realized that he was not much of an in gamer, and he needed to find someone to do it. He passed the map to JMF Modding, who uh, basically decided that uh, it was too much of a ta uh, too much for him, which I don't blame him. It's definitely been a long long journey to get where we are, and he gave the map to me after uh, Mercer, and I uh, I looked at it and I decided that I would do my changes that I did to Mercer to this map and improve them. And with a little bit of help from uh, Western Iowa who provided the brand new grain bins that you guys will see featured throughout the map, as well as Brian Greenwald himself helped re uh, by remodeling some of the buildings that weren't quite right in terms of scale and whatnot. Uh, I also had help from JMF Modding, Anhack, Wade Mitch Modding and Edits, OS Farms, MRM Farms, and AW Modding with uh, various contributions to the map. So without further ado, let's take a look at the map. So when you first load in with Seasons, the first thing that you're going to notice is that there's snow on the ground. This map is based in northeast Wisconsin, and uh, early spring and Seasons represents the month of March, which there will likely be snow on the ground during that time period in real life. So I included the ability, I included it to have snow when you first start. So this will uh, hamper your uh, ability to get right into the fields, However, I also made the realistic change that the uh, f uh, winter crops like wheat, rye, and triticale will stay alive over the winter. As you can see, there's actually, uh, I believe that's triticale over there. No, that's, uh, that's actually rye. Yep, that's rye, and I'm standing on triticale. Both are growing still. So that adds a, another realism feature. Just a quick thing to notice right off the bat. 
Uh, let's take a quick tour of the map, uh, and then we will move on to some other features. So, this will be your triggers and tour part of the uh, part of the tutorial. So pay attention, guys. So I'm gonna buy all of the land. So right off the bat, this is your milk house on your tie stall farm, or on your main farm, sorry. And inside the milk house, you have the ability to sell right here. So if you come over here, press R if you're using the animal pen extension. This is your ability to sell milk here. Uh, your milk replacer will be produced right here. Uh, you have two options to get rid of it, or sorry, to feed it, and I will show you guys that. If you want to manually fill up a truck with uh, milk from here, you uh, pull the truck up here. And if you are taking it from the freestall barn in the back there, it's over here. And there's your, uh, this is your trigger for your automatic sales. So when we go in the barn here, you'll see the tie stall cows. In real life, if this if this farm had both a tie stall and a freestall section, very rarely would you milk the cows in the free or the tie stall section. However, uh, due to game engine limitations, you, I can't really set up a quarantine area, so I just made both parts a uh, milking area. So you can put your cows in right here. You can buy your cows, and then uh, they will uh, be fed down this alley. You can drop bales of hay, or you can uh, feed them with a little feeder cart. We'll get to that in a minute. This is just the, uh, just remember, this is the triggers and tour. Uh, just general map tour. So you've also got calf pens here. The idea behind these is that you keep your milking herds completely full of cows. And when, uh, when they're about to give birth, you pull the, uh, you pull the cows. Uh, so the cows will stop milking two months before they give birth. And you're going to send them out to a, uh, one of the, your uh, dry areas realistically and then uh, when they're just about to give birth you bring them into the calving area here where uh, you'll keep your cows for a little bit and you can feed them milk replacer and hay in here and whatnot uh, you've got your uh, this is your hay shed uh, your auto load loft this uh, this time I've actually got it on one trigger so you just uh, select what you want and it'll bring it down you fill it up at the front of the barn there for the garage door we'll get back to that out here you got the stable cleaner which you just get into right here. The camera's kind of messed up on it and really isn't important, so don't worry about the camera. The way you operate this thing is you press B to turn it on and it will start bringing in, ideally it will bring in manure, but it, uh, this one just happens to have uh, taken the snow off the ground. So generally you want to keep this thing full of manure so it doesn't grab snow. There's no, uh, I will try to fix that actually before the release, but that's how that works. Uh, you, you can pull your manure spreader up there, you can create a pile. So it'll auto, it'll automatically load your manure spreader if you bring it under there, otherwise you'll have to dump it in a pile. Going out here takes you outside. And going in here takes you to your, uh, corn grinder room, which we'll get back to in a minute here. So if we keep walking... Or running, I guess. This is your calf trigger. When your when your cows are about to give birth, bring them in here. This is how you this is how you access these uh, eight calf pens. Just come here and use the trigger here. As we keep going here, we'll get to the uh, we'll get to the freestyle barn. Anybody else who's tested them out, they ask, how do you open the door? How do you open the door and the gate? Okay, so if you want to open the door, you come up to it like this. If you want to open the gate, you got to do it from the inside, which I guess I'm not doing this one. I gotta go over here to this taller door. Oh, so this one lets you open the gate from outside, and then open the door. They're a little bit confusing, just watch your little help thing up there. One will say gate, one will say door. But generally these ones here are controlled by uh, the inside for the gate and the outside for the door. So, uh, as you notice, the cows are uh, static in the freestall here. The reasoning behind that 
is if I wanted them animated on both sides and not have them just wandering around in the pasture 24/7 out here, this thing, the most, the only thing, my only option would be to make two separate nav meshes, which would separate this into two barns, and that has a, that has two downsides. Number one, you'd have to feed them twice, as you'd have to come, you'd have to go through one way and come back the other, which is realistic, but the downside is that nav meshes cause huge performance drops because they run on your CPU. And uh, as you as you've all heard me say, farm sim really only farm sim only runs on one CPU core, which is really bad for performance. So there's just it's just a lot easier on your uh, computer and your frame rate. So the enjoyability of the map to just have static cows in here. If there is enough demand, I can separate that and make that two barns. Down here, you've got your uh, one of your dry cow areas, or you can use this to raise beef cattle or whatever you what have you. Put your heifers, whatever you want, down here. You uh, put them in here, and you feed them down here. Just drive in here with your mixer wagon or whatnot, and you just feed them. And uh, they will, uh, the manure will spawn in random piles all over the floor in here. So you'll need to uh, pick it up that way, and uh, that'll keep the cows happy when you do that. Up here. You've got access to this pasture here. Again, if you want to put beef cattle or whatnot, what have you in it, you can. Uh, it, the the cows can only graze and use the uh, feeder ring down there. You can see the light blue thing off in the distance. We'll get a little closer. So in the spring, summer, and fall, they will graze on the grass. And in the winter, if you want to keep them out here, you got to use the feeder ring. The uh, free stall is the only barn on this map that produces a slurry, and you can unload it here. Got a cold storage shed here. Got your milk parlor there. Uh, you got a fuel buy point. Another cold storage shed. With uh, some storage here for your seeds and fertilizer and whatnot, totes, whatever you got. That silo there is your uh, high moisture corn silo. It turns your cor uh, high, uh, regular corn into crack corn. I decided to switch uh, CCM to solely B for earlage to make things less confusing. And you've got a workshop here. This has uh, no function uh, because I recommend using TPS toolboxes so you can roll them around like you would in real life rather than trying to fit larger equipment back into the corner. So you got two, uh, you got two grain bins here. These are capable of drying your corn. Uh, they're two souk up grain bins and they hold a total... They hold multiple crops, but if you want to be realistic, only put one in them. So obviously you got your corn and dry corn here, and everything holds four four hundred thousand two hundred twenty-two, or sorry, four hundred twenty-two thousand eight hundred sixty-eight liters, and that's all these big bins hold the same amount. And there's also some smaller bins in the map. We'll get to those. This is another dry cow or beef cow area, depending on what you want to put in here. These cows are static, and there's no there's nothing I can do about it. Uh, I tried putting a nav mesh in here, and every attempt I made. If you bought too many cows, no matter how low I set the number, it would just crash the game. So I gave up on it and just left them static. So that's the story behind that one, why those are static. And the tie stalls are pretty obvious. Tie stall cows don't move. They literally just sit there and eat and drink. Again, with uh, just like the one down below, the cows will spawn, will, uh, they'll produce manure all over the ground. You have to scoop it out to keep them happy. And uh, you can either pile it in here, or you can pull your manure spreader up and just make it a little easier to fill a taller manure spreader for your skids deer. This is a commodity or bale shed. Uh, I recommend uh, just, I'd store bales in it personally. Uh, from what I understand, commodity sheds, the walls go to the roof. I think that's the difference. Either way, your firm, your choice. Uh, then you got your you got your silos here. These all hold the same stuff. They all hold uh, earlage, haylage, and corn silage. And they will ferment it into usable products. Uh, this, the bean meal and all that stuff as part of your food ration is handled a little bit differently on autumn oaks. You now have the ability to just buy it. You can still produce it using the mix mill, 
but if you don't want to do it that way, you can just buy it, just using the Global Company menu. So you click on Bean Meal, and it gives you the option to buy it, and it'll uh, slowly transfer it over to replicate the idea of somebody delivering it. As always, uh, just like Mercer, in order to use any part of this feeding system, you got to turn it on. So that one there turns on the uh, bean meal one. We'll get back to this when I do the cow feeding tutorial. We'll use this barn for, the, for an example. And then these ones here enable this one. And uh, also this one over here enables your uh, high moisture corn. Alright, so I've got everything covered at this farm here. Let's move on to the next farm. Okay guys, so now we're at the small tie stall farm here. This is another. This is the other dairy barn on the map. And this one is very similar in operation to that one, but it's on a lot smaller of a scale. If you've got your pasture here, we'll get to that. And you've got uh, this trigger here is for your calf pens. Uh, so when your cows are about to calve again, you move them in there. And when they dry up, you can uh, move them to a couple other pens. I will show you those in a second here. So uh, just moving along here, uh, your milk replacer trigger is right here. You put your milk replacer in here. I'll demonstrate that later. Uh, your trigger to sell your milk is right at the doorway here. With you want to use the automatic milk sell, otherwise pull your truck up right here. We'll keep going here. Open the door. You got 44 tie stalls, I believe, in here. And if you press R, you can see here. Here's your animal trigger. Just back your trailer up here to put them in here. This is your uh, high moisture corn setup here. Just pull your little mixer cart under here, which I'll demonstrate later. The uh, snow is coming into the building, even though the season's mask is adjusted. That is a small bug. I'll try. I'll try again to fix that, uh, but I haven't had much luck. So as you notice, this is a really tight barn, and to feed these cows, you will need a special piece of equipment, which, like I said, I will go over. Uh, there'll be a separate little part in the tutorial for feeding. Uh, again, uh, you got your uh, you got a little bin outside for your soybean meal. And you got this button here, we'll uh, turn on the silo, and this one here will turn on the soybean meal. And I uh, don't have them on at the same time. Just like the last farm, we have a manure conveyor thing here. A, uh, what do you call that? A uh, stable cleaner. And it works the same way. Press B. This one's not going to pick up snow, thank God. And then you just press, uh, you can either press left control I to dump it on the ground, or pull a manure spreader up, and it will uh, start unloading into it. This is how you access your calf pens, if you want to feed them using uh, buckets, which I will explain in a minute. This takes you outside. This gives you access to the pasture, which works like the other one there. You can only feed the cows in the pasture with a uh, bale or let them graze in the spring, summer, and fall. And then you have one more pen over here. This is your, this would be like your dry cows or heifers would go in this pen. And uh, the cows will randomly produce manure all over the floor, or all over the ground in here. So you have to clean that up, keep them happy. And there's also a uh, automatic silo unloader thing here. You can't, again, the camera doesn't really do much, so it doesn't move. And all you gotta do is just press R, select your commodity from the silo, and it will start dumping it in and feeding the cows. On this farm, you also have two grain bins with truck augers, which have a capacity of 174,504 liters. This farm is definitely not equipped to produce a lot of cash crops, so keep that in mind. You'll be mostly growing corn to fill that harvest store. And the rest of your cash crop will be uh, quickly sold and uh, turned back into uh, hopefully equipment upgrades for you. You have an auto load loft in here, which I uh, show you in the barn there. And you also have the ability to destroy round bales and bring them down below for your little feeder cart by placing them on that door back there. And then uh, when you place them on the door upstairs, you just come down here, put your freighter card under it, and press R. I'll demonstrate that later. Also pressing R here will let you access the uh, the bales above in the straw in the loft. You got a fuel buy point here, some storage, another storage shed here, 
with a little bit of a workshop and another storage shed here. And some cold storage here. So that covers the tie stall farm. We're going to move on to the beef farm next. Okay, now we're at the beef farm. We'll give, I'll give you guys a quick tour. And we'll move on to some other parts of the tutorial. So as you walk up to the farm here, you've got your two grain bins here. These are the same as the other ones at the uh, big dairy farm. So these ones are GSI. I uh, didn't have much luck getting the fans animated on the... Uh, when the crops go in, I'm going to reattempt that uh, after this tutorial. If it doesn't work out, then they'll either spin all the time or I'll probably have them on a switch. So you got your two grain bins there, with the same capacity as the other farm there. You've got a uh, auto load loft up here, and the ability to destroy round bales. Also, uh, one feature I forgot to point out at the other farm is you can actually hide the ability for the. Uh, you can actually disable the loft which allow you to bring in big square bales and either stack them in here or use this. As we take a quick uh, walk around the farm here. Going to the barn here. You've got a uh, bottle calf area, which is where you would feed milk replacer, which is accessed by this, uh, by this uh, door here. Uh, the ca uh, the beef cows on this farm are split from the regular cows you're used to. They have a different feed ration, and the objective here is to produce uh, calves and either fatten them up or to sell them. You're, you're, you're essentially a cow-calf operation versus a feedlot operation, which is what seasons normally simulates. So this is your uh, buy point or drop-off point for your calves, and you can uh, the, the manure will spawn here, so you need a small tractor or a skid steer to bring it out, and you can feed them by bringing in milk replacer to, I believe, right here. Let's see. Yep. Uh, so you feed them right here. And then your, uh, your this is your feedlot here. So if you want to keep any of your male cows or calves and uh, raise them up for meat, uh, you can do that so, right there. And you can feed them using the little loft above or using the bale destroy, which you empty there. And you have another option which is the automatic silo. Again, the camera doesn't really do anything. All you gotta do is just press R and let it feed them. So I didn't really put much work into the camera. These cows are static because I wanted to have cows indoors and outdoors. I know I could have animated them on one side, but I just thought it would be easier just to leave them static. That way I could have them actually look like Angus cattle. I think that's what, I, I think that's what Angus cattle look like at least. I'm not a beef guy. Anyway, you can put these cattle in here. Obviously, these are your uh, female cows, so realistically, you want to put them in your pasture, which you'd put them in the pasture right here. So I'm actually going to spawn a couple. Uh... So those are your mother cows, and when they give birth, you're going to want to take the calves, and you're going to put them in this gate. And when you put the calves in this gate, it puts the calves in the pasture. And the goal now is to raise them up to a decent weight, and then sell them. Or you can just sell them as they give birth. It's your choice. But in order to help them put on weight, you can feed the calves using a creep feeder. So bring your uh, New Holland uh, mixer grinder or uh, buckets or whatever you got and fill up your creep feeder. And that will help fatten your calves. The uh, mother cows will not eat out of that, though. It's too small for them. They will instead graze from the pasture or eat out of the bale ring there. I'm going to go over the feeding in a in a few steps here because it is a little bit different for the beef cattle now the specifics of it at least and then you, on the uh, the rest of the farm you got a cold storage shed there and a uh, little open face shed there so that concludes the tour of the beef farm we'll be back here for a feeding tutorial in a few steps so now we're down the road at the cash crop farm or contractor farm essentially uh, this farm is specifically set up for cash cropping or depending on how you're, you're playing, you could have it just so that this is like uh, your contractor equipment, like your self-propelled forage harvester and whatnot is stored. Uh, you've got a uh, got a grain dryer here, which has a capacity 
of 750,000 liters for every crop you put in. There's two bins, so if you want to play realistically, you can only hold two crops. And your wet bin, which is basically the pit and the dryer itself. I, I don't know much about grain dryers, so I just kind of set it to 125,000 liters, which is a little, about two loads out of one of the Wilson trailers. And you also have to buy propane to keep it running, like that. Just click on it, and then set the maximum, and then buy it. It's a pretty basic farm. The silo doesn't function because this barn doesn't function. This is basically a small-scale operation that decided to go cash crop. You've got a nice big shop here for storing all of your big equipment. And I can tell you from the original version of this map that you could store all kinds of stuff in here. Or at least the amount of stuff you need to actually play on this map. And then you got a cold storage shed out back for everything else. So that's the uh, that's the cash crop farm. This is the old farm, I guess we'll call it. Uh, this farm is no longer essentially in business. I, I guess would be the best way to describe it. Uh, the only thing you got here is a fuel tank, and this farm's only purpose on this map is to provide you with more fields. The idea would be like a, a farm that just went out of business or whatnot, or just sold all their animals, however you want to look at it, and just provides just the surface of this pasture and some land. Uh, none of these buildings have any function. There's no grain storage. There's nothing of any real interest here. It just kind of fills in the area on the map and provides you with some more fields. So now we're at the dealer. The dealer also has a sell point at it, as well as all of your buy points. There's one other sell point in the map. We'll look at that in just a minute here. So here's the dealer. And here's your little uh, repair thing here, the workshop. Go inside the dealer here. If you want to store equipment in here or whatnot, if you have a really big contracting operation, store your trucks, what have you. Uh, you have your Autumn Oaks Egg sell point, which is just this, these two bins here and that little uh, pad. And then you have a buy point for seeds, fertilizer. One of these is herbicide, and one of these is liquid fertilizer. Then you also have a buy point for, I believe either this one is lime. Nope, that is not the lime buy point. This is your anhydrous buy point. The map is fully compatible with all anhydrous equipment. And that there is your lime buy point. Here is your uh, sale barn, where you can buy your cattle without having to pay a delivery cost. And then you can just kind of walk up here, you press R, you can... You still have to pay the delivery cost? Yeah, you still have to pay the fee. Okay. That's cool how that works. I didn't know that. So yeah, uh, you got a... Uh, do you have a trigger at both? Yep, you do. Okay, so you can back a trailer up to either of these. I didn't even know I made it that big. Yep, so that's how that works, and inside, not much going on in here. Looks like everybody's gone for lunch, basically. If you find yourself on the back roads of Autumn Oaks, you might notice that there's one other cell point uh, called Risser Grain. Uh, this is the only other cell point on the map, and you just drive over this pit to sell your grain. The Autumn Oaks Egg also takes your milk. I forgot to mention the last part there. So Autumn Oaks has some new crops. Uh, if you played Mercer, you're familiar with almost all of them. So uh, the first one we got here is silage corn. You can't combine it, but it's great for forage harvesting. It gives you a decent forage yield, and it also uh, stays green forever to make it look realistic when you harvest it, as well as the uh, stock that's left over looks like it was forage harvested. The next crop we have here is rye. Uh, or Sorry, this is triticale, actually. Uh, this gives you a really poor yield if you combine it. But it has the benefit of um, being a cover crop that you can mow. Uh, basically, with the green mowing mod, you plant this in the f in the fall after you take off your silage corn or what have you, and then you uh, mow this down in the probably uh, probably when it gets to this height, so uh, whatever the spring or early summer, and then you immediately follow it up with uh, soybeans or silage corn, depending on how much time you have to get those in the ground. And then this will uh, this allows you to get two crops off in one year. It gives you a hay, gives you some hay or haylage right off the bat, and then immediately it gives you the ability to have soybeans or silage corn right after it. This is rye, exact same thing as triticale, poor yield, but great for uh, 
mowing it down and getting yourself some good uh, ha uh, haylage or whatnot. This is a new crop for uh, Autumn Oaks DFMEP. This is, these are narrow soybeans. These are uh, soybeans planted on 15 inch rows. The idea here is to simulate uh, the realistic uh, outcome of planting with either a drill. So if you don't use a planter, you can only plant narrow soybeans. Or if you have a planter, you can plant narrow soybeans. But realistically, you would only plant them if you had a 15 inch uh, inner plant set up like the Kinsey 3600s do, where they have the uh, row units in between, that's your 15 inch inner plant. And then finally, uh, alfalfa, it, it just cuts into grass, but provides a realistic crop for grass in the area, giving you a more realistic way to create hay. And those are the uh, new crops. Autumn Oaks has a very unforgiving Seasons Geo. You really have to stick to getting stuff done on time. Uh, the first uh, transition of spring, you cannot do anything because the ground is still frozen. Because it's uh, it's March. Uh, that far north, you, will, you don't work the soil in March unless you're really lucky. So uh, you really need to rely on your winter crops as well as getting stuff done on time. So your barley and oats can be planted on uh, through your, uh, the last remaining day, uh, days of spring. And then your uh, corn and soybeans and your narrow soybeans and... Uh, silage corn can be planted on the last day, the last part of spring and the first part of summer and then you don't have a lot of time to harvest them either you've got basically you just have the entire fall for the most part so you got to be really on top of things this map is really designed for people who want to play really realistically so keep that in mind while we remain on the topic of crops uh, one thing I would like to remind you guys is that autumn oaks features Realistic yields for all of the realistic crops grown in the area. So I did not include sunflowers, canola, potatoes, sugar beets, or stuff like that. That being said, unlike Mercer, the yield for grass has been lowered to a more realistic amount. This is for two reasons. Number one, uh, it's realistic, and number two, it allows you to have a reason to make multiple cuts. Now, as such, when you make a uh, make a pass with a mower. Your windrow is going to look kind of messed up. Like this. There isn't much I can do about this. I tried messing with the settings, but this is what you get. It's kind of a little gapped, but it's just, it's a minor thing. When you rake it up, it'll put it in a nice windrow, and your little John Deere 348 square baler, if you use one, will pick it up a lot easier than the wide windrows. So this actually worked out in my favor, and probably yours if you use one of these. As you can see, it has a little tiny pickup. And uh, when, you, when you rake this, it gives you a nice, I'd say maybe two, two and a half, three foot windrow. Makes it real easy to pick up with that baler. All right, uh, another miscellaneous feature is the ability to attach the silage blower to the silo. All you do is pull the silage blower included in the map up to the silo and press Q. Uh, it'll line up the, it'll produce a pipe and the uh, si the blower will uh, gain a little bit of weight. It will not actually stay attached because it's a limitation of the game, but it will definitely lock it there a little bit better than they did in Mercer. They won't get bumped so easily. The uh, blower does weigh a lot more when it is attached and when you detach it, it uh, frees it up. So you can definitely drive away. It's still attached, it can still look like it's attached. But, as you can see, you just attach it and the blower will back to normal weight. It's kind of a, uh, kind of a realism thing, kind of a little bit of a fix that you guys bump with the blower and cause it, the uh, silo not to fill. So I hope that helps you guys with the problems with filling the silos you guys had a Mercer. Alright guys, now we're going to take a look at how to feed the calves. Uh, you have a few options. Uh, obviously your major uh, thing will be milk replacer to feed them. And the uh, parlor on both farms allows you to feed them milk replacer. Or allows you to mix milk replacer. I've, uh, I'll demonstrate this one and then I'll demonstrate the other one. So this is the main farm here again if you didn't notice. So what you do is you put your milk replacer on that uh, right by the door there on both farms. They both work identical, 
and then you buy your water. Or you can buy the water first, either one works. Uh, I've increased the capacities of everything. And then you can just, if you just wait a couple minutes, which we'll cheat at here. Come back here. You can now spawn two bu you can spawn up to two buckets at a time in milk replacer. Uh, and use this to feed your ca uh, calves. Your other option is, like on Mercer, to just back a tank up and fill it up with milk replacer. You can do that right here as well. In this general vicinity, just pull your tank up. I won't demonstrate that, but you can definitely do that. Alright, so then when you're ready to feed your calves, come around to the back side of the barn. And you just hold your bucket over here like this. And it'll slowly empty. Give it a second. I don't have any calves. So it might be a... Uh, we might run out actually. Or we might not run out of it. There it goes. So that's how you feed them the milk replacer. And then you can lay your straw, your hay, and all that down. And uh, one other thing that the calves require that the milk replacer doesn't fill... Uh, where is it here? So the milk replacer will fill up your requirement for silage and crack corn and CCM. So you also need to get them soybean meal if you want to get them to 100%. So in order to do that, just... And you just follow the same concept of spawning pallets. Keep in mind the uh, calf food requirements are extremely low, so this is actually not that inefficient of a way to feed them. Obviously you'd want to use the vehicles to move them around, but you just take this, just take this bucket, and you just feed them. Don't mind that it's coming out the bottom. And just like that, as you can see there, that's a that's the requirements for one calf, I believe. Uh, you don't want to keep the calves in here much longer than, say, a couple uh, seasons transitions anyways. And then you just move them out either to the pasture, to that barn down there, or that barn over there. At the tie stall farm, making milk replacer is, is exactly the same process. You just put the, uh, put the uh, skid right there. By the water. Wait a bit. And then dispense the bucket. Take the bucket. I'm just gonna hop the fence. And bring it over to the trigger here. Again, your trigger for your, uh, oops. Your trigger for your milk replacer and, uh, all that stuff is right here. Your straw goes inside the pen. So you just feed your calves like that. Your uh, soybean meal will spawn right here, which I can demonstrate, I believe, if I bought it. And there's your soybean meal here. And I believe on this farm I actually took the time to fill the silo up a bit. Nope, I didn't. Okay, uh, we'll get to that in the later bit of the tutorial. I'll show you guys where the cracked corn comes out. Uh, here it's pretty obvious, it just comes out right down there. On the other farm I will show that later in the tutorial. Alright guys, uh, another feature is this uh, stationary mixer. It's completely optional. You can use this barn 100% with just a regular mixer, but if you are using a little feeder cart, I highly recommend these things. So uh, go ahead and uh, use any uh, any tractor that's considered a loader tractor, like uh, mounting a loader to a tractor, or in my case, this classic. It's kind of heavy, it's kind of not, but all you got to do is just weasel it in there. There's no collision on the auger or the belt. I'm not using my steering wheel, so we'll just 
and all my controls are backwards. So you'll know you'll have it in here right when it's just off to the Sorry guys, it's pretty miserable to watch. Alright. Give it a little bit of a bump there as we close the door. Oh, I got super strength on. That's another way you can put this in here, too, if you want to be unrealistic about it. Which I gotta do now, because I bumped it. Went to close the door, and... Alright, so once you get it weaseled in here, in order to use this thing, you just get in it over here. And the camera is kind of messed up on it, being a stationary vehicle. Uh, so... You get a... This is your mixer. And what you do... Use this to make your mix. If you, if you do it this way, you, you're completely free to use a regular mixer. But if you're using the stationary mixer, you do it uh, just like a normal mix. So first thing you want to do is pull up your feed uh, feed table here. Let's say we have, let's say we're feeding 140 cows today, and the liters per day is well. On autumn oaks, the feed rate is cranked up by three times. So we're going to do this to 1500. And this thing holds, I actually don't know how much this holds, 26,000 liters. And remember guys, to make all you need to do to get to this one is switch it over to Automox in the bottom of your thing, and then click file, make a copy. Everybody asks me, how do I, why can't I edit it? I can't edit it. You need to, you cannot edit this one, click file, make a copy to get your own version to edit, just so we're clear. And we got lots of haylage, we got lots of corn silage, so we're going to go 40% there, and this all has to add up, just so you know. And we're going to crank this down to 5%, and so that adds up. So it says we're going to feed 210,000 liters a day, which probably isn't right, but we're just going to, we're gonna, we're putting that in there like that. I think it actually should be 490. I think that sounds about. I think that's about right. Anyway, so we got this. This is how many liters per day. And uh, this is uh, if you multiply this, it will kind of give you an idea of how much feed you require for the year. So one major change is that uh, hay is now part of the uh, haylage now. So you, it's no longer a straw filler. I know you guys didn't like that immerser, so I fixed that. So here's our uh, here's our feed right down here. So we're going to put in 44% corn silage, 35% haylage, 4% uh, grain products, which is soybean meal and all and ground ground feed and all that. And then our high moisture corn is going to be uh, 4%. This is the accumulative total, or this is the accumulative actual. So this is going to be how much of each goes in, and then this is going to be accumulative cumulative total. Which means, so this will be, at this number you stop filling this, and then you go to switch to haylage, you go to this number. <clears throat> then you go to grain products, you switch to, you go to this number, stop. And then you go to this number and stop on high moisture corn. So let's get started. Oh, we're already in the vehicle. Okay, so, first thing you gotta do, get out. Oh, wrong one. We're gonna start with the corn silage. Gotta check something here. All right, we're still good. Okay, so we're gonna put in. Pull this up. We're going to put in eleven thousand four hundred thirty-three liters of corn silage. As you can see, coming out of the silo here. Yeah. 
Oh, this is in tons. Oh, we can go by percentage, though. Uh, 44%. Takes a little bit. Alright, so we got that amount. We're gonna go over here. Turn that off. Got my haylage in this stave silo here. It's on, ready to rock. Get in the mixer. And we start putting in the, ha the haylage, which we're going to take it to a total of 79%. You can see it's just flying down the conveyor here. So we turn this off, and then we're gonna just hop over the conveyor here and do our green products, which we are going to take to 84%. Then we're going to do the high moisture corn. Which we're taking to 88%. But we actually got to overshoot that a little bit to bring everything into spec here. And there you go. We got a 7.7 .7 ton mixture of... Uh, TMR, and now uh, for Autumn Oaks, I've included two vehicles made by Mark uh, Perry, uh, JMF Modding, which are this Wick feed cart and this Weaver line feed cart. Now the Wick is designed to only fit on this farm, and it's got two modes. It's got a mixer mode, which allows you to make TMR using only this. Uh, this is to fix a bug. With Maze Plus, if you leave one type of one fill type of something in, in a uh, self-propelled mixer, it will crash your save game, cor corrupt it. So before you save, make sure that it's either got a complete TMR mix in it or at least two ingredients of a TMR mix or it'll break it. If you want to feed only one thing at a time like straw, switch it over to feeder cart and it works like a, a dump truck essentially. You just fill it up and it dumps it out. It doesn't mix anything. So we're going to put this, we're going to set this thing to feeder cart. And the way this works... Just gonna drive over here to the conveyor belt. Get nice and close. Pop in this. And fill her up. It'll take a quick a quick, uh, couple minutes here. So I'm not driving the steering wheel, so it might get pretty awkward here. Oh, okay. There we go. Now I can start unloading. And because I'm not using my steering wheel, I've got myself in a bit of a predicament here.
All right, so I don't own any cows, so it uh, doesn't really take much feed. But they do consume three times as much as they normally do. And I'm just going to take a moment here to show you guys all the feed triggers. So for these cows, it's right here. Thing is extremely slow, so just give me a minute here. I'll get over to the other two. Ideally, you wouldn't want to, you would not use this to feed your everything else other than that tie stall back there. But since I've already got it full, I'm using this as a just to demonstrate. So you wheel in here, pull right up, and just like that. Alright, now I gotta switch this over to the right side unload. Alright, this one's a little bit messed up. Looks like the right side unload doesn't want to work for me today. I don't know if it's the barn or the, uh, oh, there we go. All right, well, as you guys can see, that's where all your feed things are here. I'll worry about this later. All right, guys. We are back here at the uh, little tie stall farm on my main save, and I'm going to show you guys how I feed these cows. So we're going to pull up this here. I've done the math. It's, this number here is... Oh, I messed it up. This number here is 77, but it's not. Let me type it. There you go. And then the mixer capacity is 6,000. And we're going to keep the same ratio, even though it's not quite correct, but it'll work. So we're going to do 50% corn silage, 40% haylage, 5% grain parts, 5% high moisture corn. And our actuals are going to be 45% corn silage, 36% haylage, 4% grain products, and 4% high moisture corn. So let's get started here. First thing I want to do, turn on the silo. Nope, still got the bean meal silo on. So we're going to start by filling this up with corn silage. And we're going to 45%. Then we're gonna do uh, we're gonna do haylage out of the silo. Normally, I would alternate between the two of them depending on how full the silo is to realistically simulate the idea of the unloader being on the top. But for this purpose of this tutorial, I'm just gonna pull them right out of the silo. So we're gonna take the haylage to 81 percent. All right, we got to 82 there, but no big deal. Now we're going to put the uh, green products in and we're going to go grab the corn. And we're going to 85% here, so we're going to overshoot that a little bit. I'm going to put a little bit more in. Just to get the corn solid and spec there. And then we're going to take this to 90%, give or take. They're already at 90%, so now we're just going to use this to fill it out. And then to feed these cows, try not to get this thing stuck on the wall. Not using my steering wheel, so I'm not the best driver. Got all my controls set up for the steering wheel. Makes it 
really awkward to drive without it. And then pretty much just drive along here until it gives you the ability to unload. And that's how you feed these cows. And I'm just going to empty this thing out and show you guys one other quick feature while we're in here. It is related to feeding. Again, with uh, Maze Plus, there's a bug with self-propelled mixers. You cannot have one ingredient in them when you save the game or it'll crash your save game. So you either need to... Uh, they need to set these carts to be your uh, to be feed carts, so they just hold stuff and they don't actually mix. Or you need to have a minimum of two products, even if the. Okay, we got this wedged in here real good. Okay. Again, without the steering wheel, when your settings are all set up so the stuff doesn't turn back and whatnot, it makes it really hard driving this game. So again, I apologize. So you can uh, pull. Uh, hay and all kinds of other products that are destroyed by the uh, door up there, which allows you to like put corn. Uh, if you want to do corn stalk bales or just anything round bales, just put them up here and it'll uh, it'll uh, destroy them for you. So that way you can uh, realistically feed out round bales instead of having to try and drive them through the door. Okay, so the tie stall farm also has two other pens on it. Uh, one right here, which is fed by using the uh, little automated feeder thing by going here, pressing E, then pressing R, which brings up this panel. You select what you want to feed, and it'll automatically feed them until it runs out of either feed or runs out of space. And then uh, you have a pasture right here, and the cattle will graze, or you can put any kind of bale in here, and they'll eat that instead. So that covers the entire feeding system on the tie stall farm. All right, guys. So we're at the beef farm here, and uh, the beef cattle are separated from the dairy cattle in terms of feeding and being able to put them in the pens. The cows that go in the beef farm can only go in the beef farm. And your objective here, as I said at the beginning, is to raise these cows to produce calves and either fatten them up or sell them at a uh, as calves. So uh, the, their feed mixture is completely different. You can't really read this. But it's, uh, all this is fibrous materials like hay, uh, corn silage, haylage, and all that stuff. I'll actually put a list out. This one here says uh, total mix total, totally mixed ration. And this one is uh, milk replacer and milk for the idea of simulating bottle calves. And these are your, this is hay and all your silages. So the idea here is your feed is now separated to be... Either uh, you feed them a fiber for the main part of their diet, whether it's corn silage, hay, haylage, all that stuff, or earlage. And for the uh, rest of their diet, you top it off with a grain product. So there's numerous ways you can do this. You can buy pallets of ground feed to get that gra uh, grain product. You can uh, put hay up here in the loft and feed them, uh, feed them with pallets. Or you can fill the silo with earlage and feed them hay. Or you can fill the silo with uh, corn silage and feed them, uh, you know, feed them with a pallet, or feed them with this over here. This is a, uh, this is a corn cracker. You get in it, and you can just uh, you put put corn in it. It dries it out, and then it cracks it. You just feed them with that automatically. You just press R, and then uh, press Enter, and it'll start taking it out, and feeding these cows. Uh, you can feed just any combination of things, as long as you're giving them a base of a fiber whether it's grass, hay, some kind of silage or whatnot, and then a grain product. So it really opens up a, a world of possibilities for beef cattle in the game. Now, again, I showed you guys there's two pens here. You've got a calf pen here, which puts the calves in here, and you've got a uh, the main ca uh, pen over there for the mother cows. Uh, the calves will eat from this creep feeder. You have two ways to fill it. You can either come out here with the New Holland Grinder Mixer with your own crops, or you can just buy a skid of ground feed. Just put it over top. Obviously, that's not, obviously using super strength isn't realistic, but we do need to cover a lot of stuff in a short amount of time in this video. And as you can see here, you want to use this thing? It works too. And... I haven't show, I've talked about them, but this will be the time I actually show them. I'll show you guys how the bale feeder works. Oops. 
spawn us a nice big round bale. Nothing better than a bale of plastic, right? And as you can see there, it ate half, they ate half the bale already. So that's how that works. So with that said, that uh, covers all the feeding and hopefully the rest of the tutorial. I hope you guys had a good understanding of what's going on here. If not, uh, leave your questions in the comments. And if I have to, I will make a second tutorial. Thank you guys and enjoy the map. I hope you guys love it. Thanks, guys.